Welcome back Psychonauts and Cosmic Thoughts, it's a Rolling Zaloon, and today I'm going to share with you three stories I found on Reddit under r slash trip reports. Each of them is crazy in their own way, so sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. By the user Psilocybin Dream. The name of the story is my first trip on 50 milligrams of 2CB, a cautionary tale about weighing your drugs properly. Without further ado, let's begin. I was hanging out with a friend and she asked if I wanted to try 2CB. She said it was like ecstasy without a come down and it would only last for five to six hours. I was nervous because I had been under a lot of stress and also because coming up on MDMA is very unpleasant for me. I was afraid 2CB would hit really hard when it kicked in and I hadn't eaten anything in several hours. So I said I would try a threshold dose. She got out a scale and weighed out 5 milligrams, taking the loose powder with some water. Half an hour later, I noticed I had a bit of nausea, but couldn't tell if it was the drug. I was a little worried that I wouldn't even feel the tiny dose. My friend and I sat at her kitchen table and talked. An hour in, she asked if I felt anything. I'd almost forgotten I was on something, but suddenly, a shift in the headspace hit and I noticed the ceiling was breathing. She cut up an orange, but I had no appetite and significant nausea now. An hour and a half in, I was tripping on par with 50 UGs of LSD. It didn't feel like MDMA, except that I couldn't shut up and I worried that I was annoying my friend. She couldn't believe I was tripping so hard on just 5 milligrams. I went to the bathroom and noticed my eyes were, br were really dilated. The bath rug and towels looked amazing, like coral reef. I had a strong urge to take a shower, but felt weird about asking at somebody else's house. Back in the living room, I was shivering a lot and had to put on a jacket. Two hours in, I was having solid visuals, equal to 100 UGs of LSD. The headspace was still building, and I felt good, but uneasy because I couldn't expect, I didn't expect to be tripping at all. I tried to listen to a techno playlist, but it gave me bad vibes and, aggre and aggressive synth synthesia. So I switched to some relaxing music. The effects continued to build quickly, and I texted another friend to tell her what I was on. Around two and a half to three hours in, I completely lost track of time. Music sounded amazing, and I was thinking a lot about heavy philosophical things. My other friend texted back. It was too hard to use my phone, but receiving a message from him really helped me give a sense of time. As I'd lost the ability to gauge how quickly it was passing, it crossed my mind that maybe I'd weighed the 2CB incorrectly. I was, in, I was an easy in a way that I'd never felt on LSD or MDMA. There was a dark vibe in the background, reminding me how easily the wrong thought or feeling could spiral out of control. I went to the bathroom and briefly thought that I was going to be stuck in there forever. I considered taking Edizolam, but immediately pushed the thought away, as I didn't urgently need it. The same thought popped in immediately afterward, and I tried breaking the loop by, by doing something else. I absently washed my hands and dried my hands a few times, in confusion, and stared in the mirror. My eyes were fully dilated, and I smiled, thinking how beautiful I looked. It, feel, it felt like I was in there forever. Checking my phone, I was shocked to see only a few minutes had passed. My friend put Bob Marley on the speaker, and it sounded really loopy. It was a song I've heard a lot, making me wonder if it was a remix I hadn't heard yet, or if the drug was really this strong. It sounded like the auditory version of a fractal, and I started to see it branching out visually along the wall and ceiling as soon as I had the thought. Uner unnerved, I listened to my own music again for a while, careful to avoid songs that might be too trippy. I settle on the Bourne's album, Dopamine, and really enjoyed the song Holy Ghost. 
The song Past Lives came on, and the intro was so profoundly slowed down, I could hear the vibrations of each instrumental, and the silence in between each vibration. Looking at the clock, I was amazed the second hand barely moved. Everything was slowed down. I felt really good. But the slight darkness was still present in the background. At this point, I pretty much knew I had fucked up and taken 50 milligrams. I started to feel hungry and went into the kitchen, where I played with some fruit by rubbing it against my face and hands. The physical sensations were almost reminiscent of MDMA. I took an apple into the living room. Despite, despite still being hungry, rubbing it against my face felt better than eating it. I laid back and tried to enjoy the rest of the trip while it lasted. Meditation felt very natural. I could be content to do this for hours on 2CB. It does seem to have some spiritual potential, but feels less consistent than other psychedelics. Unfortunately, the entire time I had, significant, I had a significant body load and couldn't regulate my temperature at all, going in between sweating and shivering constantly. Rubbing an ice cube against my fa face felt amazing while I was warm, almost as good as it does on MDMA. Almost five hours after taking it, I was completely sober again. I waited an hour before driving home where I passed out pretty quickly. Other than having some bizarre and vivid dreams, I felt great the next morning. No come down at all. Another friend later brought me some capsules with pre-measured 10 milligram doses of, M of 2CB and I confirmed that visually that I had taken a lot more than 5 milligrams that night. Be careful when you weigh out your drugs. I was lucky that 2CB is overall safer in heavier doses. Not all substances are so forgiving. This was posted to the same reddit under the user trip report throwaway. And let's begin. I need to share my experience and I thought this would be the best place to do it. I was with a woman for 7 months and she decided to exit my life and go with an absolute deadbeat. It ruined my self esteem, broke my heart, and I couldn't function properly at my job. It's been 6 months since we broke up and every time I wake up and I'm thinking of moving on, I come back to my bedroom every night and come to the same realization, she's not there anymore. So last week I extracted my DMT and last night I filled the pipe with 50 milligrams. Butane lighter to the bowl, I went in. I instantly saw triangles and some other 40 shit floating across my vision on my first hit. And there I was and there was some other colors that seemed foreign to me somehow. I went a bit limp after my second hit, but I took a small third and lay down after putting everything down. I felt like I was sinking and there was some machinery sounds getting louder and louder in my head. I felt like I was going to explode. I didn't know when it stopped, but after that I found myself floating in space for a bit. I saw stars and galaxies. I felt welcomed. I felt like I knew my pain and everything was in absolute perfect harmony. Then everything seemed to disappear, including myself. I didn't know what I was feeling anymore, but then I was in some tunnel. It was red and orange and some other foreign colors swirling around in a 26, 26 dimensional kind of shit or something. And then some goddess appeared. She had the face of my ex. I didn't feel sad or angry or resentment. I felt peace. She was speaking English, or she wasn't speaking English, or any sort of human language. But I understood what she said, and that was, ask me your questions, or something sort of like that. So I asked her, would we have ever worked out anyway? And she said, in an infinite number of universes, we did. I asked another, do you still love me? She said, like in an infinite number of universes, I still do. I don't know how to explain this, but the peace somehow expanded and consumed me. 
I can't describe the depth of peace, but I've never felt anything like that in my life. Her chest opened and it spewed out some more colors, and then I got sucked in. I don't remember what happened after that, but then I came back to reality and I was incredibly happy. I moved on, for sure, but I still miss her. That's just life, I guess. I'm satisfied with the small forever she gave me. Thanks for listening, Reddit. All right, this is the final story by Cool Breeze 1990. It's called How About That Time I Accidentally Smoked Opium in Costa Rica. My study abroad semester was over. It was summer, and I was finally headed to the infamous Montezuma Beach. Some people, cool people, called it Montefuma because that's where you go to smoke weed and hang out on the beach. I get there, get off the bus, and head straight for the ocean. I pass a guy who is digging a trench so the water can drain from his nearby restaurant to the ocean. He stops me and asks me my name. I introduce myself. His name is Jake of the jungle. He's from British Columbia, but now lives on the beach in a mango grove here in Montezuma. Nice to meet you, Jake. Off to swim. I'm in there for maybe 10-15 minutes splashing around when I notice Jake calling me back to the beach. He says, you're never going to believe this. They just killed Osama bin Laden, and here you are with the same name. I have a name that sounds vaguely similar to the one of Osama's name. Yes, I'm Obama. I say, yeah, that's, br that's a pretty weird coincidence, and dry myself off. He tells me he thinks it's fate that we met that day and asks if I wanted to come see his place. I say sure. We walk for maybe a mile down the beach to what he tells me is some famous NFL player's house. He says he keeps care of the guy's grounds in exchange he has a place to set up his hammock and all the mangoes he can eat. Pretty fucking sweet setup. This dude is a little weird, but he's kind of fun has some good stories, and I'm loving the free mangoes. I eat my fill and tell him I'm going, I'm gonna go for now. I wanted to go swim some more. He invited me to come back later for a party. He said there's booze and girls. I was in. I left and found some random dog and hung out over her for the, hung out with her for the rest of the day. What a cool dog. I named her Lucy and she followed me everywhere, even up a 20 foot cliff even jumping off a 20-foot cliff into the water below. I jumped off the higher cliff that day, 45 feet up or so, and learned why one does not cannonball from that height. The think high-powered enema. I set up camp on the beach somewhere, then headed back to Jake's. It's dark now, and it's just him and one other guy sitting, silently staring at a fire. What have I gotten myself into? Where are the girls? Jake is cooking shrimp. We eat the shrimp. They are really undercooked, but things are getting weirder, and I'm not gonna tell this dude he fucked up his shrimp. I eat them. I have the shits real bad the next day. We start drinking while the shrimp are cooking. I brought a whole liter of gu guaro, a sugarcane-based liquor. He drank the whole liter, like chugged it in a few goes. Me and the other guy exchanged nervous looks. At some point after the shrimp, I offer to smoke us out with some bud. He offers some of his own bud, and we spark up. Maybe 10 minutes later, I'm really fucking high. Like, almost as high as I've ever been. The fire is just so beautiful. I say, hey Jake, I feel pretty weird, man. He laughs and he says, yeah, that's probably because there's opium in that weed. I had no experience with opiates before this, really. Maybe a Vicodin or two a couple of times. This is not great. It reminds me of the time I spoke spice and got way too high, threw up all over my place and got dumped by my high school girlfriend. But that's another story. And it's getting even weirder. For the record, it felt amazing. Body and mental euphoria and intense visual phenomena morphing sensory. The fire was magnificently memori memori memorizing, <laughs> but also on the verge of nausea and just generally uneasy. 
all at once. Jake tells me this story about he and this guy who were playing golf one time. The guy wrote, wrote down a four on his scorecard when it should have been a five. Jake doesn't like cheaters. He took out a golf club and smacked the guy in the mouth with it. Knocked out a tooth. I don't know what to say. I mumble something about how I hate cheaters too. And he was totally in the right to fuck this guy up. He starts to tear up and tells me that actually this story occurred between him and his father. And when he was a boy, he had lied and his father had hit him. Fuck. And I just told him, what now? We moved on and he starts playing the drums on his two empty five gallon water jugs. He stands up at some point to dance or get more into the drums or something and falls back first into the fire. Me and the other homeboy don't know what the fuck to do. Jake is kind of lying there in the fire. We just are so very fucking high. I'm stuck. After five seconds, Jake rolls out onto the sand and puts himself up. Well, I'm pretty high, fellas. I think it's time for me to go. And I was out. I kept in touch with Jake by email a couple of times after that. He found a home for Lucy and was still living on the beach last I spoke with him. That about wraps it up. I think, I hope you guys have enjoyed these stories. And until next time, drop a like, maybe subscribe. Have a great day.